So lately I've been thinking, free of languages and frameworks, what principles make good code? This is a difficult question, but one thing that I consistently noticed in good development and software design is the use of abstraction. So what even is abstraction when it comes to software and how will it make us write better code? Let's start with a simple definition of abstraction. I like how Steve McConnell puts it in Code Complete. If you refer to an object as a house rather than a combination of glass, wood, and nails, you're making an abstraction. If you refer to a collection of houses as a town, you're making another abstraction. So abstraction is the process of removing details to simplify a concept for use. Okay, pretty plain obvious so far. But how does this make us write better code? It turns out abstraction is really powerful when we start to design and organize software. I really like how John Ousterhout spoke about abstraction relating to software design. The term abstraction is closely related to the idea of modular design. An abstraction is a simplified view of an entity which omits unimportant details. Abstractions are useful because they make it easier for us to think about and manipulate complex things. So what does this mean? If you've ever written code using an object-oriented language, you've used abstraction to organize your project without even realizing it. For languages such as Java, JavaScript, or Python, the idea of classes inheriting from one another are simple layers of abstraction. For example, if we have a class dog, which is a subclass of canine, which is a subclass of animal, which is a subclass of living thing, each step up the inheritance chain is becoming more general and more abstract. Each class is a simplified view of an entity which omits unimportant details and is there because it makes it easy for us to manipulate complex things. Okay, we've done a lot of talking, but we're not really any closer to understanding how this helps us write better code. So let's take a look at some examples. Here is a very simple program for a light switch that outputs the light we've turned on. When we call it with a one, the light turns on. With a zero, the light turns off. Pretty innocent looking code, right? Almost nothing about this code is abstract. When I call the function, we know straight away which light is going to be turned on. It says right there in the code. This code is concrete and inflexible as it is completely coupled to only work with one feature, the bedroom light. Problems arise when we need to change and reuse our code. And trust me, you always end up needing to change and reuse your code. What if we suddenly have a kitchen that also needs lights? Our example code is unusable as it stands, so we'd need to change it, duplicate it, or come up with a completely new solution. An easy fix would look something like this. Hopefully, this is not a surprise. We're now passing the room name for the light we want to control, and what do you know, we just abstracted part of our code. From the function's point of view, the room parameter is now abstract. This small change has made our function much, much more usable, as it can turn the light on for any room versus a specific room. And this is what abstraction can do for us, keeping our code general enough that it can handle a multitude of situations. If we could scale our example up to a multi-million line enterprise project, we've just written code that can do a lot of thinking for us. So you're very likely thinking, okay, I get it, but how is this suddenly going to make me a better software engineer? Abstracting your code as an activity is really quite simple, but it's the difference between having difficult code that can only perform a very particular task and having flexible code that is very easy to swap out and maintain. Let's ramp up the complexity in our example a little more. This code is now starting to look a little more chaotic and closer to how I thought code was meant to look when I started programming. This is the same code as before, but we now have one main function to handle all of our lights. Take a second to let your mind reel with just how many function calls we could fit inside the turn on lights function as our project grew. An important question to ask at this point is, why is this code bad or messy? It still does the job, right? As we add more and more function calls to turn on lights, the complexity of the code is creeping up and the legibility of the code is creeping down. And this is assuming we don't get lazy and add some extra logic, which you always will. 
This is why the previously mentioned way of writing code is not preferred. It may not start as messy or illegible, but it's poised and ready to get out of control if you let it. Let's clean up this example and talk about the differences. This code does the exact same thing as before. The only difference is we've restructured how the code is called, and in the process abstracted away some details. Our previous messy code example has a code hierarchy that looks like this. When the program is executed, we call one main function that is linked or coupled to 13 other function calls. This may not seem that bad, but notice that the structure looks a little lopsided. Let's compare this to the code we just cleaned up. We still end up calling the flip light switch function 13 times, but the structure of the code has some very small but crucial differences. We have an extra layer of abstraction, the handle room layer. This is simply helping us organize and reuse our code. The code is now grouped in usable chunks that can be swapped out or modified. If we need to add or remove a new light switch to the living room, for example, I only need to modify the handler function for that room. The main turn on lights function would be completely unchanged as it's only aware of the handle room layer. We have kept the change local to the scope that should care about that change. The turn on lights function should only care about orchestrating the smaller functions. We don't want or need it to care about the other functions. That's their responsibility. A good comparison is that of a factory assembly line. Does the worker fitting the wheels in a car factory need to concern themselves with how another worker is fitting the roof? Of course not, and if they are, something is wrong with the assembly line structure. It would be a waste of their time and effort to worry about such things. Both jobs are very important to get done, but they need to operate almost independently. To summarize, abstraction is all about generalizing, organizing, and helping to manage the complexity of your code. If you can get a really good handle on abstraction, you'll notice your code becoming more manageable, maintainable, and reusable, especially as a system grows. And I would say that's the difference between good and great code. Thank you for watching. Links in the description for the code examples and the original article that this script came from. Subscribe for more videos related to software engineering, computer science, and technology.